Hey friends and family, hey fools, hey loved ones. How's it going today? How are you feeling? What's shaking? <laughs> what's new? <laughs> what's falling away and what's coming through? There's so many things like multi-dimensionally simultaneously happening <laughs> now <laughs> through all, of, all, all of this love there is. So uh, yeah, I just, like every day, just working through and playing through and practicing and doing my thing and being me the best I can <laughs> and I'm able uh, to be. And I received so many things and so many synchronicities and just all this continuity and the work and the vision and the being I'm choosing for me, this being of love <laughs> that I get to be all of this for all of me. So integrating and alchemizing and purifying and cleansing and surrendering and letting go and opening to receptivity and uh yeah i really enjoyed like practicing and inviting and invoking like all this love all these qualities that are a part of this love like to be and play with me and i'm just enjoying learning and growing and being and creating and experiencing all these things. So feeling very humbled and very grateful and very thankful and very joyful, <laughs> very full, <laughs> very foolish. Yeah, embracing the full, embracing the whole, embracing the fullness and the truthfulness of all. So yeah, making peace. Oh my gosh, making peace. <laughs> I am this peace. I know this peace. I know this peace is me. This peace begins with me. This peace begins with me. I am this peace. I'll be this peace. I'll claim this peace for me. So, my peace of peace. <laughs> my little peace. Yeah, in my little world, I'll be at peace within me. And so there has been some great shifts happening. And one thing that I have noticed is that in the mornings, like I feel more peaceful, like when I wake up and I've been practicing, like shielding myself at night for the last, I don't know, maybe six months and, um, just, yeah, holding that intention and envisioning either like an egg shape of light around me or like a Merkaba. A Merkaba around my body, a Merkaba around my bed, and a Merkaba around my whole entire home. <laughs> and so, like, it, yeah, in the, in the three, so it just, I start with me, and then I go outward. <laughs> and, yeah, and then I just, yeah, say a little prayer of thanks and, and blessing, you know, like, please bless everyone, and thank you for all of this, and, um, yeah, may we receive all the help and all the love that we need, and, all of that and and please keep us yeah protected and please help me like increase my faith yeah in what is and what will be and respond accordingly yeah respond in the ways that feel right for me and true for me yeah and honoring of me and we so I got to share some things last time about like some of the things that I really love and some of the things that have been huge gifts in my life and blessings, things that I get to choose. Um, yeah, things that help me feel alive and nourished and revitalized. And um, so I did share a little bit about like chance and some of my experiences of um, choosing certain disciplines and yeah the qualities um, to invite in or yeah to help us like break up old patterns or um, draw the new in or bring something forth and through to manifest um, through our lives through our life through our livelihood yeah through our creativity through that life force yeah and in um, joy, expression, creativity, and receptivity. And um, yeah, the soul is here for its own joy. <laughs> so yeah, why not live in joy? 
we cannot rid the sorrows of the world, but we can choose to live in joy. And so that's what, yeah, my intention is not to ignore like the suffering, but to have compassion for it and to have allowance for it and to know that it is right and it is the other side of joy. On the other side is joy. So, um, reconciling the two and the duality or, and the polarization of the two. Yeah. To, to become one, to become one unity, like the unity of peace. So, yeah, just realigning and aligning. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts, words, deeds with what I, what my soul <laughs> really needs. Yeah. With my soul's well being's needs. Yeah. And so, just looking at my choices again, because that was one thing. Yeah, that I was in a little bit of denial about, even though I knew I had choices, but it was just like a deeper layer or a deeper level breaking through like old constructs and old core beliefs and old identities and old stories that kept me from fully expressing myself authentically. And so it's just a bunch of old patterns really that sometimes I will become aware of myself like falling into or just, yeah, they become activated and it really does <clears throat> take an awareness like or a, or a willingness to become aware or to be aware or to be present um, to do like pattern interrupt or just allow the pattern yeah, to play itself out and then like, then see into it or see through it and then choose something else and like not beating myself up about it. Like, oh, I can't believe I just fell into that. It's just like, oh, all right, this is, this is something to play with, you know, Let's be curious about or, oh, I can, I can see like why like those certain fears trigger like this identity or this energy or um, can activate like this pain body or this samskara, this unfinished energy pattern and, and what it relates to. Like I can start to see some of those things now in certain ways that I hadn't been able to before. And it's just like really wow, like I am wowed. <laughs> I'm like blown away by so many things like that happened this week and practicing like emotional detachment or non-attachment, not suppressing the emotions, but just observing and being aware, like bringing in that neutral witness um, to the watches, <laughs> the watcher. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, that guardian. And so it's been really interesting and really funny actually to see like all of these characters <laughs> in my inner world. <laughs> like running amok in certain ways sometimes but in other ways like it can, it's like becoming a little bit pre more predictable in certain ways like oh my gosh like it's just so funny i maybe i'll share some examples and we'll see what it gets to be expressed here about that but it's just so comical it's such a comedy it is it really is a human comedy and like yeah once once we can like make peace with like the other side of it the tragedy yeah and uh, remembering not to take ourselves so seriously and also grateful <laughs> for the second agreement don't take anything personally because that is my immunity <laughs> it's an emotional garbage yeah and toxicity that i don't really need to agree to or take on <laughs> yeah yeah anymore like and it's like yeah wow just it feels really liberating and <sighs> it just i don't even know if there's words to describe like <laughs> all the feelings <laughs> but it is an expansion and it definitely is wow just freeing becoming free <laughs> or realizing i am free 
and acting in accordance with those new, true, <laughs> full, <laughs> yeah, knowings, <laughs> like those inner knowings of truth and clarity. And then like, yeah, sometimes they are fleeting and they come in and they're so clear and then like just going into the illusion again and it's just remembering and forgetting and dancing. And so it is just what it is and it is all it is and it is all it gets to be and it is what we make it and it is all for we so it is happening like for we and not to to me or we like even though like yeah it's not easy and it doesn't always feel good and it doesn't always look pretty and yeah but this is what it gets to be right now like and <laughs> What do we get to do with it? And how do we get to participate? And how do we show what we how do we get to show up to play? So yeah, there's all those things like and it's up to us really. So yay. <laughs> what do we get to choose and who do we get to be? And what do we get to surrender and what do we get to free? What do we what can we allow? Yeah. And what can we attend to, respond to? and allow to unfold through this great mystery. So, yeah, letting go and surrendering and being open to receptivity and embracing the unknown. And because this is where we're moving into, like, <laughs> yep. And it's exciting. It is a little scary, but it is like stretching our comfort zones all that and all the possibilities and all the gifts there are really what a grand like play and story like for us to rewrite and for us to write for ourselves yeah so let's take a breath here for a minute and see what wants to be shared with all my little follow-throughs continuity and synchronicities that have come up to help me like, yeah, just expand and move through <laughs> this birth canal <laughs> into the new life. Yeah, that is coming through right now, this new time. And so I got to share some chants the other day and um, yeah, super just like was inspired to to choose that and to offer that and to receive that and didn't know what it was going to really be. I had received some uh, little gifts and nuggets and gems from my Healing Mantras book by Thomas Ashley Ferrand um, a couple, a few days before I actually recorded that video and it was just so perfect, like everything that was coming in. And um, as I was doing that video, like uh, to share some of the chants and some of the uh, things that have helped me like with my practice develop my practice um, and I super appreciate like that um, Opportunity and like the desire to like follow through and choose things that I love and that I know nourish me and so um, it like, Once I do choose like that nourishment and that vitality and it's just like helps me stay on track with even more things to care for my well-being. So I, uh, I opened up this book, The Shivananda Companion to Yoga. It's a book that I got at a library sale and I actually bought it because there were some cool pictures that I wanted to use for collage. But so I just uh, ended up picking it up the other day and found some treasures and gems and nuggets and uh, cut out a few pictures and made some more soul story boards and there's a board behind me here all about yoga and meditation and um, chanting and gazing and all those things that help us like with mindfulness and um, with self-mastery and um, yeah i have gotten out of practice in certain ways like um, I haven't practiced yoga for a very long time and yeah that's just certain patterns that I go through sometimes like where I'll be really consistent with certain things and then like I kind of like choose a substitution or I get busy 
with something and then like that old practice kind of sometimes falls by the wayside <clears throat> and then I fill it up with something else sometimes that maybe isn't like um, the best choice for me but still it's all related to the whole and it's all a gift for me like, yeah to organize and to see so like what works and what, what maybe works better for me and yeah there's some some things that like maybe worked well like a couple years ago that maybe wouldn't work well right now because yeah in a different phase and stage and cycle of growth so can't really like that was my one of my old I guess mind traps or like sabotage saboteur kind of traps was that like um looking back on certain parts where I felt like I had it together and like what was I doing back then? What, you know, like to go back to how it was back then. But it, yeah, that's just a silly illusion, like really. But appreciating like the things that have like nourished me and strengthened me and uh, contributed to my well being in the past, like I'm grateful for those experiences and those gifts. So, like, yeah, what can it be now? Like, um, just starting <laughs> to allow, like, uh, let go of what I think it needs to be or how I think I need to be just show up and invite it to be and so yeah like that's one of my goals right now is to get uh, practicing and playing with yoga again and uh, taking care of my physical body and yeah this instrument of mine <laughs> that I get to play with and through <clears throat> And so anyway, um, yeah, I have the Shivananda Companion here. I flipped it open and it actually went straight to a page on mantras, which I actually glued to my board back here. And the, the cool thing was, is all of the chants on that page were all chants that I had just shared on my video, except for one. Yeah, and it was just like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? And so it was just different descriptions of the same chants that I had just shared. Like, yeah, some of those. And uh, also, yeah, got a few more gems and nuggets that I didn't expect. And I'm, yeah, very, very pleasantly surprised and grateful <laughs> for, for just like, yeah, those, those synchronicities and, and all this love, really. And so, yeah, just with some of the chants that came up, it was just so awesome like really and it was affirming <laughs> and, and I love it when that happens like it's just so cool can't even make it up <laughs> it just happens when we make the space and make the room for love to be and love to be received and freed and shared and given yeah freely yeah. honored honoring the whole of the exchange and that reciprocity so yeah, I found some amazing nuggets today. As I was clipping out photos for Soul Collage in my art books this morning, I let's see, recorded a video on Tuesday all about chants and mantras, and I flipped open my yoga book right to the mantras, and the chants on that page were amazing synchronicities. Tee hee, wink, wink. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, some of the things that I found out. So, um, Radha, Radha had come up. And I wasn't really all that familiar with her. And uh, so I super appreciate, like, yeah, this opportunity to learn more and to play with these things and to receive, like, the beauty and, like, all that's being given and offered and shared and received right now. So Radha is the female aspect of Shyam symbolizing the cosmic love of the Divine Mother. Shyam representing cosmic love and compassion in the male aspect. This mantra transmutes all emotions into unconditional love. And so Ram, the energy pattern for truth, righteousness, and virtue in the male aspect. And Sita, female aspect of the energy pattern of Ram. It stands for the descent of nature in the form of the mother. Sita Ram, when joined together, um, embody the energy existing in an ideal marriage or union. 
Mm. Meditation does not come easily. A beautiful tree grows slowly. One must wait for the blossom, the ripening of the fruit, and the ultimate taste. The blossom of meditation is, is an expressible piece that permeates the entire being. Its fruit is indescribable. Swami Vishnu Devananda. Meditation does not come easily. A beautiful tree grows slowly. One must wait for the blossom, the ripening of the fruit, and the ultimate taste. The blossom of meditation is an expressible piece that permeates the entire being. Its fruit is indescribable. And then, um, yeah, one other thing that I read, and I had forgotten about this, because there are all different types and forms of yoga, but bhakti yoga is the path of love and devotion. It sounds like my kind of yoga, my kind of thing. Singing, chanting, and devotional, yeah, praises. The love of God and creation, our beloved, yeah. So, yeah, that just makes me like super happy because it does, it does feel like it fits for me because of the emotional capacity that I have and like, yeah, working with my emotions is one of the best things I've ever done. Instead of like avoiding, denying and suppressing, repressing, yeah, and betraying myself, like, through disallowing myself, my full range of emotion, and my full range of feeling. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with it before. It seemed overwhelming. Like it would swallow me up. And so, yeah, that's where some of my substitutions came in. And that's where the addict comes in, and having compassion. For the addict yeah. and I might go into those things just a little more of what I received in the last couple of days about the addict and about like um, our conditioning and like our denial of our fullness and our wild natures yeah and and learning not to trust our instinctive nature because of instinct injury and all those things and it helps me understand so much and have so much more empathy and compassion for myself and for all others and for what we've all been going through with the, like the mind control and the sabotage and the fuckery and the self-deceit and yeah all of that and so i am living <laughs> living love and forgiveness and i am living this love through forgiveness, like through this process of forgiveness, which is also really great because I have been reviewing some of my forgiveness videos that I did last month, in the last month or two, and just like, wow, just kind of blown away by all that has fallen away or all that's been integrated and all that's been transmuted and transformed. So like, yeah, um, this frustration and this like, disallowance and everything and like moving into acceptance like and peace like feeling that peace and then um om shanti om om shanti om like that's just been like playing in my head so as i like become conscious of it it's funny um when i'll like yeah consciously participate and start singing it out loud or just start yeah like going along with it in my head and it is like it is this new piece yeah this new piece like that I'm embodying and welcoming and moving yeah letting it move through me like letting all things move through me to be at peace to be one at peace within me so it's beautiful and oh indescribable like really <laughs> but let's see um yeah let go of agenda stories roles beliefs ask for clarification stay curious listen let go of assumptions be present and mindful ask questions be open receptive be as clear as can be the twins dual nature relationship friendship partnership communication and conscious gemini energy yeah so there's some cool things happening Holy crap <laughs> and holy shit <laughs> holy shit and all of this so uh the lunar eclipse is, and the full moon's coming up 
So it's like, wow, so, 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 so potent. I can already feel how potent it is. It's just like, okay, let's just breathe, breathe through this ride. So I did make a, another couple boards the other day and, um, yeah, I get to make a video and show you guys like the pictures on it and yeah, the archetypal themes <laughs> that, that, yeah, are being shown <laughs> through those images. And um, one of them is like a couple, a woman and a man on a roller coaster, <laughs> like at the height, like being <laughs> like thrust up and then falling down. Yeah. And so they both have like their hair is like all wild and <laughs> expressions of just like, oh, what's going on here? Like just, yeah, just being in the moment with that ride and just letting it move, letting that ride. Yeah. Letting, letting the, yeah, the ride, allowing the, the ride. Yeah. <laughs> Remembering its ride and all of that, like, and enjoying the ride. Yeah. And so, it's just, yeah, up and down and all around. And just remembering to center and breathe and recenter as many times as needed. Yeah, just begin again. Breathe, begin again. So, remembering, forgetting, <laughs> dancing, singing, chanting, <laughs> yeah, expressing and being present like <laughs> to receive an experience of what's here right now the gift that's here so um yeah the the lunar eclipse and the the full moon and in sagittarius and yeah all the things yeah that are being revealed and healed <laughs> right now. So I, I uh, watched something on uh, Molly McCord's channel about like this Gemini energy and conscious Gemini energy. So after establishing what is valuable through the energy of Taurus, Gemini then shares those ideas through communications and local connections. The light of Gemini is a communicator who relates through mental capabilities, quick wit and rationale. Ruled by Mercury, Gemini is a curious messenger who enjoys socializing with neighbors and siblings while finding joy in daily activities and language. Gemini shows us our mental capabilities, the dualities within, and how we communicate with ourselves. So I think that's awesome because that's like the energy that we're moving into. And it's also my rising sign of Gemini. Yeah, the twins. And I'm also a twin, so <laughs> it's doubly double for me. <laughs> like, yeah, all these things in so many ways yeah in more ways than one and so yeah what i wanted to share i wanted to share a little bit about um yeah so this is like one page that i clipped out of this the shivananda book and um i was thinking about yeah maybe gluing it to my board but it ran out of space there on that side so yeah there is a whole nother side to yeah add to but uh, I just thought this was interesting. Um, on this side, it says prana and the subtle body. And then on the other side, it's all about breathing. So I wanted to share just a little bit about breathing and how and why the breath is so important. And this is part of the reason too, why I was so kind of like, what in the hell? Like, why don't you guys understand this? Like my mentors and teachers and people like peers, like people that do energy work, People that do, that teach yoga or practice yoga, like that have been for years. And I was just like, if you understand those principles, why don't you understand like w the mask thing and why, you know, and the mind control and all that stuff. And it was just like, it was something that I just couldn't reconcile and I just couldn't understand. And I just, oh, it was like, that is where like I was blocking myself in so many ways because of the need to understand how in the hell can you understand this but not understand that? Yeah, and it was just so like funny, but it was my own like, yeah, my own um, limitations, like where I couldn't understand, like, so I was upset with them for not understanding. Yeah, that's so funny, like, yeah. And yeah, so breathing and also um, I had picked up this book, which was next to the Shivananda Companion. My dad had given me this a couple years ago, I think maybe for Christmas or for my birthday. 
So it's Jesus and Buddha, the parallel sayings. And I did flip this book open and did some book divination and got a couple of gems and yeah, things that I liked in there. And I'll um, go over that next because it relates to like, yeah, how it's so much easier to see like what's wrong or lacking or <laughs> maybe <laughs> not fully true on the outside than it is to see on the inside or to see like within ourselves so that's why like I super appreciate like all the mirrors companions reflections and those projections like when I allow myself like, when I allow them to exist <laughs> when I allow myself at all to exist yeah and uh, yeah, I'll go more and in, in deeper into that. But so for breathing, that's like just one of the most important things is the breath and the breath of life. And yeah, that gift that connects us and frees us at the same time. And there, yeah, there were so many cool things like really that are coming up around that and that exchange, like that reciprocal exchange and the ascent and the descent. So the above and below, and the inner and the outer. And, uh, yeah. The dual nature of, yeah, the one that takes so many forms and has so many faces. <laughs> Breathing. When the breath wanders, the mind is unsteady, but when the breath is still, so is the mind still. Hatha yoga. And Prada Pika. Prada Pika. <laughs> breath is life. We can live for days without food or water, but deprive us of breath and we die in minutes. In view of this, it is astonishing how little attention we pay in normal life to the importance of breathing correctly. To a yogi, there are two main functions of proper breathing, to bring more oxygen to the blood and thus to the brain, and to control prana or vital energy, leading to control of the mind. Pranayama, the science of breath control, consists of a series of exercises especially intended to meet these needs and keep the body in vibrant health. There are three basic types of breathing, clavicular, which is shallow, intercostal, which is middle, and abdominal breathing, which is deep breathing. A full yogic breath combines all three, beginning with a deep breath and continuing the inhalation through the intercostal and clav cl clavicular areas. Most people have forgotten how to breathe properly. They breathe shallowly through the mouth and make little or no use of the diaphragm, either lifting the shoulders or contracting the abdomen when they inhale. In this way, only a small amount of oxygen is taken in and only the top of the lungs used, resulting in lack of vitality and low resistance to disease. The practice of yoga demands that you reverse these habits. Breathing correctly means breathing through the nose, keeping the mouth closed, and involves a full inhalation and exhalation, which bring the whole of your lungs into play. When you exhale, the abdomen contracts and the diaphragm moves up, massaging the heart. When you inhale, the abdomen expands and the diaphragm moves down, massaging the abdominal organs. Just as there are three stages for an asana, so in pranayama there are three parts to each breath inhalation, retention, and exhalation. People often think of inhalation as the most essential stage of breathing, but in fact, it is exhalation that holds the key. So that's interesting. For the more stale air you exhale, the more fresh air you can inhale. The yogic breathing exercises lay special emphasis on a prolonged retention and exhalation. Indeed, in some exercises, the out breath is twice as long as the in breath and the retention four times as long. When you inhale through your nose, the air is warmed and filtered. But from the yogic point of view, the overriding reason for breathing nasally is prana. Just as you need to inhale through the nose to extract scents from the air, so you must also inhale nasally to maximize the amount of prana taken in. For at the back of the nose lie olfactory organs through which prana passes to reach the central nervous system and brain. So, for at the back of the nose lie olfactory organs through which prana passes to reach the central nervous system and brain. 
The yoga breathing exercises teach you how to control prana and thus to control the mind for the two are interdependent. When you are angry or scared, your breathing is shallow, rapid, and irregular. Conversely, when you are relaxed or deep in thought, your breathing becomes slow. You can easily test this yourself. Listen for a moment to the lowest sound in the room. You will find that in concentrating you unconsciously slowed down or even suspended your breathing. Since your state of mind is reflected in the way you breathe, it follows that by controlling the breath, you can learn to control your state of mind. By regulating your breathing, you are thus not only increasing your intake of oxygen and prana, but preparing yourself for the practice of concentration and meditation. So, yeah, I super appreciated that, like just little, little snippet on breathing. And then I also, yeah, I kept this one, the principles of meditation, so, and then mastery of the mind and meditation. So yeah, I'm just wanting to like kind of uh, renew um, and choose, yeah, practices that nourish me and that contribute to my well-being. And so like uh, this board here behind me, yeah, I've loved it like the last couple days, like just appreciating it and uh yeah love the symbols and everything so i've been practicing like gazing again and uh making that time and making that space and making that room for silence and yeah and just like um inviting like the practice and letting go of like rigid control of it and just being willing to show up for it so yeah and uh, another thing, yeah, that I uh, saw the other day, like actually it was the same day that I, yeah, recorded those chants. I opened up this book, The Mind by Yogi Bhajan, and um, opened to chapter three. And I thought it was interesting. Choose your altitude. Yeah, and I've been like choosing my attitude as well. So I thought that, that was great. And uh, my bookmark <laughs> that I, <laughs> it's this little clipping from the magazine, The Minotaur. So the monster has been coming up. And yeah, the monster that we know and the monster, yeah, of the unknown. So. So choose your altitude. Regardless of your history of abuses or kindness, opportunity or challenge, it is within you to direct your mind. You can be a saint, you can be a human, or you can be a demon. We are entering the age of Aquarius in 2012, November 11th. It will be a new time. The entire psyche is changing. You must purify the mind, body, and soul to be real, innocent, and sattvic. <clears throat> Elevate yourself to be angelic. This age you will all serve as an age of awareness, an age of experience. This transition to the age began in the Piscean age. The Piscean motto was, I want to know, I need to learn. The Aquarian motto is, I know and I want to experience. So we are at a crucial change of the time, a change of an age. The basic sensitivity of people to their own psyche and to each other is shifting. Now we must all experience and know our mind so we can choose to act in an elevated and effective way. Nothing less will be acceptable in this age of awareness. This is the practical technology to elevate ourselves. Nobody in the West has said it very openly, directly, and effectively. Your gunas... Your fundamental quality as a human being and psyche are your own productivity. You choose with each action and thought the altitude of your mind and life. Everything that happens around you and to you is not your guna, your basic personality, or your basic quality. Regardless of your history of abuses or kindnesses, opportunity or challenge, it is within you to direct your mind. You can be a saint, you can be a human, or you can be a demon. You can act as an animal at the altitude of impulse and ground, as an earthling human at the altitude of feelings and horizon, or as an angel at the altitude of essence, infinity, and the cosmos. It is your choice. Each of you all... Each of you has all three gunas or qualities in you, an animal, a normal human, which I call earthling, and an angel, the sensitive, awakened human. All three are there. When you act as an animal, you ignore your sensitivity. As an animal, you act by impulse and necessity. An animal acts in a very focused way. If hungry, he has to eat. If horny, he has to mate. If threatened, he has to run or kill. The impulse is so strong, it acts as a unifying force for the psyche of the animal. 
As a human, when you act as an animal, you are direct, focused, and robotic, ruled by habit and impulse. When you act as a normal earthling human, you depend upon emotion. All you have is feelings, thoughts, and emotions. You can have so many you do not know whether you should act or not, what you feel or not, or even who you are. The more you depend on that flood of feelings, as if that is you, you become more and more mentally corrupt. You lose innocence and the clarity of you as you. When you act as an angel, you are kind, compassionate, helpful, and true to your word. You are peaceful in action and peaceful at rest. You are innocent and direct. You can listen and act in the will of God and the reality of your soul. In this way, the rule of life is very simple. Each day, increase the angel in you and decrease the animal in you. That is all that is required. Most people act like an animal or earthling, but you also do the worst thing. You falsify your own quality. You develop a false ego, a false fantasy, and live in an imagination about yourself. And live in imagination about yourself. You are a human, an angelic reality, but you live as if you are an earthworm burrowing in the earth and darkness. And you are worse than the earthworm. At least the earthworm is what an earthworm is. There is no duality. Your habit is to doubt everything, question everyone. You doubt so much, you fear so much, you live in fantasy and cannot learn anything. You do not become wise. A wise person does not question anything. He has a sensory system that is alert and has intuition. He has an understanding that reads between the lines. Duality is when you have a chance to learn and instead you question. You promote your feelings and fantasy, but you cannot listen. Though you have a mental quality, sattva, to be able to listen, you question intentions, relevancy, ability, everything. That is the worst position of the mind. Your mind has qualities and they must support your personality and character. Your behaviors will directly reflect and be supported by the qualities and projection of the mind. Yeah. There are five earthly tattvas, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, that are qualities in our senses and in the world. These engage three kinds of behaviors or three qualities called gunas that determine in the altitude and attitudes of your life. These three gunas are tamhas, rahas, and sattva. And so that's, I'll just leave it there for now. But yeah, I thought that was um, pretty interesting. Yeah, I really super appreciate this book. It's uh, There's a lot of different mantras and mudras and exercises for meditation and self-mastery. And uh, yeah, it was recommended to me last January by a friend. And so I super appreciate that. It's, it's called The Mind, Its Projections, and Multiple Facets by Yogi Bhajan. So, yeah, that was freaking amazing to receive. And yeah, it is exciting and it is like, yeah, this work, this work that we get to choose, like this work and this play and this dream. Like, to create and be who we choose. Yeah, it's all up to us. And so let's claim our power to choose. And yeah, be more curious than condemning, you know? And like, yeah, I think there's more to that when he was talking about, yeah, questions. And because, yeah, I, I think questions are good, but I think maybe like there's a little bit more there that I get to look into about that about um yeah letting go and surrendering and being open to let love reveal itself to me yeah to so let the beloved reveal itself and to let the wisdom emerge organically or authentically yeah instead of trying to control like how things appear or seem or feel, yeah. So yeah, I'll look a little bit more into that. But um, yeah, I wanted to share a couple of things from that Jesus and Buddha parallel sayings. Like, yeah, it's all about the parallels and yeah, parallel structures and new structures uh, being created and uh, on that new foundation of wholeness and fullness, yeah, true fullness. And so,
So one thing that I wrote down because it was just like, yep, <laughs> this is for me right now. So why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. And that's from Luke 6, 41, 42, attributed to Jesus. And then the, the parallel saying for this one attributed to Buddha is, the faults of others are easier to see than one's own. The faults of others are easily seen for they are sifted like chaff, but one's own faults are hard to see. This is like the cheat who hides his dice and shows the dice of his opponent, calling attention to the other's shortcomings, continually thinking of accusing him. And um, yeah, attributed to Buddha. So then here's another one. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Attributed to Jesus, John 8, 32. And one who acts on the truth is happy in this world and beyond, attributed to Buddha. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, Matthew 5, 8, attributed to Jesus. Anyone who withdraws into meditation on compassion can see Brahma with his own eyes, talk to him face to face, and consult with him, attributed to Buddha. Those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake for my sake will save it, Mark 8, 35, attributed to Jesus. With the relinquishing of all thought and egotism, the enlightened one is liberated through not clinging, attributed to Buddha. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid, John 14, 27, Jesus. May fear and dread not conquer me, attributed to Buddha. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves attributed to Jesus, Matthew 7, 15. What good is hide clothing while your inward state is a tangle, you polish your exterior, attributed to Buddha. So yeah, I appreciated those things, especially, yeah, just always knowing too that anything that I do, like that has an emotional trigger, an emotional charge, or some kind of uh, unconscious knee-jerk reaction, like there's something for me to see about me, um, to see about where I can respond to my heart and my well-being's needs, to see how I can show up for me, to see what I can reclaim for me, to see um, what I'm being invited to attend to or respond to, and what I'm asking, um, what I'm being asked <laughs> to accept or to forgive or to allow within myself um, to purify, to love, to honor, or let go of, yeah. And so that's like why, why I always, I do appreciate like um, paying attention um, and working with all these things, like and allowing like the rest to be like as it is and allowing my feelings that I have around it and allowing myself to um, choose what I need for myself. If I need like some kind of boundaries or some kind of space or I need to retreat to regroup. <laughs> yeah. And uh, recenter and breathe. <laughs> yeah. I can choose all those things. Like, and I can stand up for me, and I can speak up for me, and I can choose what I need like for all of me. And uh, allow like this process of healing to unfold. Yeah. Like, through my being willing. Yeah, through my being willing, through my willingness to the best of my abilities. I receive this love for me. So, yeah, one of the things that I got to practice this week was that emotional detachment. So there was something that came up that, um, yeah, I was really 
also pleasantly surprised by like in certain ways like sometimes confrontations aren't like really the most comfortable thing but like yeah they don't have to be like freaking terrible either just in that state of allowance and grace like just willing to be present and surrendering like all those agendas and that need to please or to be pleasing or to be pleased yeah so like just taking things as they come like one a moment at a time one breath at a time one step at a time one day at a time one thing at a time sometimes yeah. so yeah there was something that came up that i just got to like really detach from and like hold space and presence in and just like okay well yeah and allow the other to be where they were at and um actually like not feeling the need to make them wrong even though it was like something that wasn't like oh like true for me like it was still okay like for them to be like wherever they were and however they needed to be and it was like yeah just really amazing like really not having to fix anything or um, to go along with it even, um, but just like holding the space for it to be. And it was all right. Like, yeah, it wasn't, it was just like, okay, this is my favorite thing right now, but it was just like, I can allow it to exist. Like I can allow it to be what it is. And like, it gets to be what it is right now. And it's just like, okay, how do I get to respond to this? And so I did, like, and it was, like, kind of a different place. And I did feel centered and I felt at peace, even though, like, um, my outer, outer situation wasn't peaceful. I was, I was able to hold that peace within me. And so, wow, this is like the new, like, way of, uh, to stable, <laughs> like stabilizing, <laughs> like, yeah, that my inner, my own inner world, like, and letting go and like bending in the breeze. Yeah. All of those things. So, it, yeah, I super appreciated that. And also like, um, something else like <sighs> happened where a friend called me and asked for advice. Um, she's, she's not quite sure what to choose. And so like, it was a different way of like uh, holding space for her and also like uh, watching and seeing like my own like kind of like agendas or strategies and whatnot, but actually like letting go of those and um, detaching from like old stories and things or and worries, like different things like the ego's need to control and um, just like kind of letting the wisdom emerge and let love, yeah, show me kind of like what was actually needed. It was more like about authentic listening and about asking my friend questions about what she wanted, you know, than, than actually telling her what I thought she should do. Yeah. Um, and so like that was awesome too, like in a way like because it was like I don't need to fix anything, I don't need to change anything, I don't need to rescue, but I can offer support and help and love and I can allow like yeah this healing and this like change and whatever it gets to be. Like and just be here as a witness and support and with compassion and like love and generosity and so yeah just practicing those things and observing so enjoying like like the opportunity and like the pop quizzes and like yeah uh, to help me with this rewiring and it is definitely like a rewiring phase <laughs> where things are yeah like new networks are being constructed and new structures are being built and supported so it's really awesome to see on the inner and the outer on the inner and the outer planes and the inner and the outer stage so. yeah observing things today and enjoying the process it's easier to center and remember love for me 
and my homecoming, shadow work and alchemy. Creativity, wonder, curiosity, receptivity, magic, art, abundance, trust, gratitude, and faith. Love, forgiveness, acceptance, value, and appreciation. I can allow all the potential and limitations. I can allow the dual nature, both polarities. I can allow the whole its fullness. I can allow the other their fullness. I can allow the other their own ways, all their own ways. I can allow compassion for the other and myself. I can allow the other and myself, our duality, our dual nature. I can allow the other their own experience. I can allow the other their preferences and likes. I can allow the other their fears and limitations. I can allow the other their wisdom and folly. I can allow myself my own wisdom and folly. I can allow myself all of my feelings. I can allow myself all my ways of being. I can allow myself to be a beginner. I can allow myself my process and my journey, my growth and my learning. I can allow myself to become more aware. I can allow myself as I am right now, love all ways. <clears throat> An interesting day to observe, practice and play. I saw some things that I'm grateful and I appreciate <laughs> the view of neutrality and impersonally looking at me and we. I got to see where I had expectations, fixated hopes, agendas, imprinting, projections, judgments, false standards of perfection and assumptions running amok. Also the resentments of the fear desire hooks. And I saw how my needs to be validated and worthy or seen as worthy, seen as enough, seen as right, seen as good, seen as worthy of belonging, love, respect, and admiration was a fixated hope or anxiety desire hooks to keep me on the wheel of needing to prove myself and my worthiness, my goodness, my enoughness, my need to please and make others or myself more comfortable or maybe feel more in control or able to manage my feelings, needs, and comfort zones. Maybe even secure my place in the whole, over-identifying with my roles of caregiver, healer, saint, and angel, people pleaser, virtuous victim, entitled child, martyr, miser, beggar, poor orphan, ghost, addict, scapegoat, peacemaker, and saboteur, Sabotaging myself, desiring intimacy while denying myself. <laughs> yeah, I did have some opportunities and some pop quizzes, and I'm grateful for all these challenges and, and for the practice, the opportunity to practice the four agreements. Yes. So, yeah, that's one thing that I'm super grateful for, like to remember every day and practicing and practicing them in a new way, in a new conscious way, in a new true and full way and it is like yeah it is a brand new day really it is with like letting go of some of these uh, yeah old wounds from the past and yeah laying the dead to rest and yeah that is just something that I got to review um, from my disconsos practice um, and it was like at the end of March that I chose that for myself um, to lay the dead orphans of the psyche to rest and it's just like wow now kind of like wow like seeing the potency of that work now and yeah just wowed <laughs> and in awe and, and and wonder about all of it as well but like yeah new appreciation for all things really like as they are like becoming balanced and unified within myself <laughs> so yeah it's, it's seeing into different things practicing the four agreements and choosing to be centered and not get sucked into emotional garbage being projected or directed yeah this is my conscious immunity <laughs> Remembering not to take things personally and choosing not to take on others responsibilities or react emotionally or defensively to what's not really true for me through the neutral witness and recentering me yeah, Breathing and choosing what's best and right for me. It was really interesting to navigate and sidestep maneuvering override frequency <laughs> and my immunity self-love compassion gratitude presence and humility forgiveness allowance and true full understanding through receptivity <clears throat> also doing my best to release or surrender my attachments of how i want things to be of how i want to feel and the ego need or the mental need fixated hope 
in fear cycles to fix or change anything without first just letting it be. Acceptance and allowance for what is and what may be, what may not yet be seen, and considering all the possibilities, staying open, asking questions, being curious and allowing. Appreciative. Knowing that there is what is known and there is what is not known, and in between are the doors of perception <laughs> or projection of truth and reality. Choices, challenges, gifts, lessons, and opportunities, infinite possibilities, infinite ways to play this game and experience life through all of love's ways. Yes, love will have all her ways through oneness and multiplicity, through unity, duality, and polarity. It's up to us to harmonize these things within us, around us, through true whole ways of relating, being love and cooperating, balancing the dual currents and opening to what is and all that will be or can be, trusting in love and all the beauty, all that we love and all we can be. Yeah. <clears throat> Practicing witnessing and observing while non-attaching to thoughts, desires, and feelings. And it's pretty damn interesting to see it all through whole new ways unfolding through everything through being one, all, many, and no thing. Super love and appreciate all the gifts and blessings and all my resources and energy that are available presently. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I got to create some things and yeah, play with some things and choose some new things for me. And so yeah, it is like getting easier to just, I mean, yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, it was like sab the saboteur uh, creating certain blocks for myself, like, to keep me, like, from what really nourishes me or what is, like, really um, aligned with what I want to create and who I get to be. And, like, yeah, just kind of surrendering, like, some of the old links of that, of those chains of slavery and <clears throat> letting them fall away and knowing that and remembering that everything is a story yeah and yeah just being here being one being at peace with me like with whatever is here so i went downstairs this morning and i got to play with paint i finally did this huge mirror that i've been wanting to do for a year so it was it it was a mirror that um we took out of an old projection tv like one of those really old, uh, huge dinosaur, uh, huge boxes, like before the, the, like the really thin screens. So yeah, like my husband took that apart like a couple years ago and I was like, ooh, like I wanted to keep the mirror and like some of the screens like from that TV and um, create some art with it. So that's one thing that I got to do like two days ago was like, yeah, I was just like all of a sudden I got a wild hair and I'm just like, I'm gonna do this. Like, and it just like didn't let any of like certain excuses or I have to do this first before I do that or it was just like I just get to do this yeah I'm just I'm willing and yay this is what I get to choose so I got to go play right play with that and it was so fun and I was like it and I didn't have any pressure on myself for like what it had to be or like what I wanted it to look like or anything I was just like I'm just gonna play like I'm gonna invite my inner child and just like yeah do it it, and in the moment just be unselfconscious about it and whatever it it gets to be it gets to be and if I don't like it that's fine too like I'm just gonna have fun with this so um, I actually really 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 liked it though like um, it's still drying downstairs right now and yeah it's a freaking beautiful work of art like I loved it it was so fun there was no uh, expectations or agendas about it uh, it was just like just for the joy of it just for the joy of creating something and playing with color and just having fun so that was super like really yeah free love for me to choose and offer to myself and receive <laughs> i just decided to do it choose it and enjoy because it's all yeah it's all for me right here <clears throat> all the choices and possibilities that I can choose right here. I used a part of our old popcorn maker. Oh, that's another thing. Like there's certain things that I've been saving, like like to, to, to pour paint through because it's just like, ooh, what's gonna happen? If, 
if we try this, you know? And so it's just like, I love that, like that magical child, like, ooh, what can we do with this? Like, what other use? Because it was like for the popcorn maker, but <clears throat> it like our heating element on it went out. And so there was this top of it that had holes in the top of it. And so it's kind of in a way like a colander. And so it was a huge little tray with like holes in the bottom, like a sieve kind of thing. So yeah. Um, just like pouring the paint through that and like, yeah, and uh, just see what came out of that. And so like, what other uses? Yeah, like, it just kind of makes me think though too, like there's certain things like, or objects or whatever that we label as, or yeah, we project onto, is that's what that is. But what else is it? Or what else can it be? Like, yeah, so it's kind of interesting with that kind of play and creativity. Yes, it is. It's an old popcorn maker lid, but it, but actually, it's also a, a paint pour, pour paint pouring tool as well, and yeah, to help make art. Yeah. So, and what else could it be besides that? Yeah, like a sieve and like all those other things. So. So trying new things out of joy and curiosity, I wonder, I wonder what this can make and create. What kind of patterns and art will be created through different things and mediums, diversity, variety, choices, and so many countless possibilities. So yeah, it's just like the natural diversity of life. How can it be better than that? Like, really? So I would like to choose to do another, oh, a tarot reading because it's been a month now. So yeah, um, choosing to practice to show up for that practice again and to continue and follow through with that. So that's on my to choose list. So it's been a month. And I would also, yeah, like to schedule a few classes and nurture relationships, friendships, and creative projects, collaborative cooperation, offering, sharing, receiving all this infinite love, L-O-V-E. <laughs> I'm excited for new dreams and possibilities and creating, choosing, expressing, and experiencing all this love. God and life, yeah, all that God and life have to give and share with me and we if we are willing to open, be, and receive. Try new things. I choose love for all of me. I choose to be one, love at peace. I choose to be responsible for me. I choose to be the love I need. I choose this love for me and we. I choose this love so be, received. I am this love I choose for me. I'll be this love to be at peace. I'll be this love just as I be. I'll be this love for all of me. And be the love I need for me. All this love for all of me. All this love for all of me and we. So what feelings, programs, emotions, distortions, strategies, inverted patterns, or cycles are we addicted to? Or being unconsciously run by or through? Be aware of choosing to hold on to or cling to our indignation, pride, aversion, hate, vanity, self-righteous virtues, and justified rage. Roles, identities, stories, and beliefs, lower ego payoffs. So be wary of becoming addicted to our self-righteous indignation. And that's like one of the things that I was realizing too the other day as I was like watching myself and observing myself and observing my mental streams was like, yeah, there is certain, <laughs> there is a certain like scrappy, scrappy part of myself that wanted to keep getting in there and getting in the boxing ring and dancing around and <laughs> jabbing like yeah upper hook <laughs> yeah yeah kind of like yeah some part of me that still wants to fight and I was like oh was this part of me like addicted to like the fight or to being right or to like the indignation and then it was so funny I actually ended up <laughs> being drawn to a video uh by Richard Grannon, who said exactly that, and uh, gosh, I'll put the the link in the comments or in the description. But it was that was what he said. He was like, "Be wary of being becoming addicted to the indignation," and it was like, "Ha ha!" And so it was like, "Yeah," because it did seem like it was kind of a little mind loop or a little story loop or some kind of mind trap or an ego trap or some yeah some kind of saboteur mechanism <laughs> at play there and so it was just like not judging myself or condemning myself for it it was just like um allowing it just watching it and allowing it to fall away really or like um 
just detaching from it so I didn't get sucked into it because it's easy to get sucked into that um, that old story of how I've been wronged or yeah or, or or those things about like all those things that are wrong right now and yeah and just just to like investigate if I need to if there's yeah some part of myself that needs me to go within and excavate, yeah, something that's been buried or hidden, <laughs> something that I've hidden from myself. Yeah, in those sorts of ways. But, um, yeah, just observing and just watching and being willing um, and knowing that I don't need to fix or change anything. I just get to observe it and watch it and um, then redirect it, redirect the energy. All we can really do is listen, consider, ask, open, <laughs> best guesses, <laughs> empathize, relate, or assume. We don't really see and we don't really know what others experience, process, feel, believe, or understand. What others have gone through or have been through, we don't really know. What we have all witnessed individually and collectively is also varied and so different. <laughs> yeah. But we can relate in so many ways and we have very similar experiences. So gratitude and respect, appreciation for true full creative diversity and joyful creating. Yeah, creative diversity, natural diversity, authentic self-expression, all of the possibilities, authentic joy, relationships, authentic being. Yeah, all of our perspectives, authenticity, contributions, experiences, reflections, love, wisdom, and compassion. Authenticity, authenticity, authentically me, authentically free, authentically full, authentic so be, authentically unique, authentically foolish, authentically meek, in your strength. <laughs> so practice emotional detachment and the need to praise, please, or judge anything to name, describe, assume, attach to yeah. that like almost need to attach to thoughts, emotions, or desires. Yeah. See with the eyes of a child, just be willing to be here. Open, curious, and wonder on self-consciousness. Listen, witness, and be here. Gaze and open to intuition and the wisdom that is within and in every being. All is connected, all is related. Life is alive and talking to you. Hear what she has to say. I listen, see, hear, know, understand. I let go to receive. Breathe and open, begin again. The magic in the mundane is one and the same. Miracles, names, gifts and blessings, psychic healings, love all ways. Letting go, cleansing, purifying, rewiring, refiring, reforging, refortifying and remembering. Play back, it's a game. Listen authentically with love. Presence, trust and faith. Trust love, enjoy love, have fun with all you choose to create. It's really all up to you. You can choose all that you want to choose. You are free to choose. It's all up to you. You are free to choose. Free will and free choice, free love, all I love. Letting go, witnessing, remembering love. Emerging, awakening, surrendering to love. Receiving, remembering, being here, love. Being present, I am here. Hello, yes, please, and thank you, dear love. Safe, protected, loved, held and dear held and cared for, all one right here. Centering, recentering, remembering, playing, practicing, surrendering, breathing, and being here. Detaching from old limitations, practicing non-attachment, observation and suspension, surrender, trust, and release. Offering, allowing, accepting, responding, letting go, letting love show me, allowing the unfolding of this great mystery. Yay. I am willing, so be all this love for all of me and we. I am grateful, I am thankful, I am faithful, I am trusting, I am open, I am humble, I am able, I am loved, I am held, I am loved. All this love I am, I bless, think, praise, I honor who I am. I love, I respect, I appreciate, all this love I am. I cultivate, nurture, attend to, reciprocate, all this love I am. I surrender, show up, let go, allow, and respond to as best as I can and am able to. <laughs> all my love. Two sons, one love, sacred feminine, sacred feminine and divine masculine together as one, in union, one love.
dragon lines in the galactic central sun becoming aligned the sixth sun end of a cycle and transitioning into the epic beginning of a true a new true full one face my fears confront and examine choose all i need and surrender remember trust and be one i am that i am that i am that i am i know that i am that i am that i am i am divine love i know that i am it's okay to let go it's okay not to know it's okay to trust it's okay to let go Oh, and so one amazing thing that happened, yeah, yesterday, I just um, wanted to go back into the fourth stage of the Handless Maiden, um, Finding Love in the Underworld in Women Who Run with the Wolves, but I actually flipped it open to another page, and it was exactly what I needed, and it was just so, like, wow, so cool, and I... Um, I feel like I need to digest a little bit more, yeah, of this one. But it was about um, the red shoes, the red dancing shoes. And it was all about like the addict and about like the substitutions that we choose when we cut ourselves off from our soul life or our wildish nature. And what happens when um, we do cut ourselves off or deny ourselves um, our instinctive nature or our wild nature or like that um, soul life, that true whole full life. Um, yeah, it was so super interesting because it was exactly like the things I was contemplating and um, working through because of these old addictions like addictions to certain feelings or addictions like to certain patterns and addictions to certain substitutions that were a substitution for what I really, really wanted and needed, but I didn't feel like I could choose. And yeah, it has all things related to that within it. And also like has to do with impressions and conditioning and like hijacking and yeah all those things so I wrote a little bit about it um, yesterday I read women who run with the wolves about leg traps and the red dancing shoes about like the capture so the capturing yeah all about the poisons that we choose when we are cut off the poisons or poor choices that we choose when we are cut off from our soulful life and addicted to our wildish substitutions that carry us away through our fear desire cycles and one of the saddest things that I've read about conditioning and instinct injury there was a series of animal experiments done in the 1960s with dogs and as I was reading that I somehow like I just pictured the German shepherds but I don't know if that was what was said in the book I'll have to go back and look but yeah I pictured them that's what I imagined and um, what these experiments were about or to see how um, animals adapted to certain stresses or to trauma or to yeah to shocks like to psychic shocks you know and um, how they would adapt or respond to electrical shocks and so what they did was they um, there was a cage the dog was in a cage and they electrified the one side of the cage and the other side was unelectrified and so the dog quickly learned just to avoid like the right side of the cage and stay on the left side of the cage because every time it would step on yeah that side of the cage it would get shocked so it obviously learned to like stay away from that side so then once like it was kind of trained to stay away from that side they switched it and um, they sh they made the other side safe safe from shocks and the other side um, yeah was electrified again and so the dog adapted quickly and learned to stay away from that side of the cage but then, like, this was really sad to me. Uh, they electrified the whole entire bottom of the cage. And once the dog knew that it couldn't do anything to help itself out, like it, it did, like, of course, like freak out and respond. But once it knew it couldn't escape, it like just sat there and it laid there and it took it and it didn't respond to it anymore. And I was like, oh, I just, because it just helped me like see that as a parallel in a way 
to like what we've all been through, like our trauma and the psychic shocks that we've endured and things. And it helps me understand a lot more about like why there isn't a response and like why, why certain people are unable to respond or unable to respond perceptively, you know, in certain ways. But like, yeah, this was the saddest thing to me. So <laughs> the whole bottom of the cage was electrified and that poor dog. Yeah, I don't know how many animals like, yeah, were put through these things. Yeah, for a, pros uh, a posterity or for science or whatnot. But like, yeah, it really was disturbing to me. Um, so the dog would avoid, yeah. And then, um, but when the whole cage was electrified, it couldn't escape, it ceased to respond and it gave up. Even when the cage door was opened and it was being shocked, it didn't even know enough like that it could it could leave the cage. So like the self-preservation instinct was pretty much numbed or shocked out of it. And so, wow, I think I wanna go into that a little bit more, but yeah. So the dog couldn't or was unable to respond to help itself or free itself from the traumatic shocks. Just wow. And it kind of helps me understand how this happens with humans and women. A failure to respond, instinct, injury, and survival strategies, wounded psyche, wounded parent, wounded child, wounded heart, wounded mind. A woman cut off from her soul life, from her wildishness, from her soul home, trying to be good and proper. Yeah, trying to be good enough to belong trying to be worthy of her wild and true life and belonging, trying so hard to be good enough, and then sneaking guilty pleasures and anything that helps her feel liberated only for a little short time, or helps her to escape and avoid the drudgery or the constrictions or the restrictions that her culture has flung upon her. And that's like the rebel, the martyr, the orphan, the addict, the feral woman and child. That's profound to me. It's just like, wow. And so, yeah, I may go into that a little bit more next time after I've like let that percolated, let that percolate for a little bit longer. But yeah, if you have the book or you can find that little section in there, it's like uh, avoiding the or self-preservations, identifying leg traps. That's what the chapter is from in Women Who Run With the Wolves. Yeah. But for now, um, yeah, this is one last little thing that I want to include here because I think it fits and it relates. And I just came across it today. And I had typed up a bunch of stuff like last year, like just because I love sharing stuff on social media. And it was like, uh, yeah, social media was like my, my own platform to blog and to just like yeah be creative with and stuff and I have actually kind of missed that and but like now I think I'm ready to create my own blog now <laughs> and get to that like now that it's almost been eight months since I've been off face crack so it's, it's crazy it's been that long but it's like the best thing I could have ever chosen for myself and done for myself even though there's parts of it that I do miss but I know it wouldn't be the same if I were to go back now and I actually don't have that desire to anymore because I'm I'm quite like yeah quite content with what is now and um, I did realize you know like that it was enjoyable Facebook was enjoyable you know and like socializing without socializing really um yeah and just like yeah all of that information and that stimulation and everything it was enjoyable and it did have its gifts and it had its value but like it was one of my substitutions for what i really needed for myself and my true well-being and so it's like wow i'm glad to be free of that now and maybe in the future i will like go to another platform to network with people and connect but like for now i'm good like with where i am right now but um, I like to, yeah, like share a lot of different things. And uh, I was looking at my documents uh, today, like going through all my old writings and like my exercises and um, like just saw certain things about, um, yeah, well, forgiving the victim and like and the addict and like looking at all those things, looking at all these things. Uh, that I had written and it's just like oh my gosh I get to go back and dive into those things and like oh see like so much more about these things like now like 
<laughs> because so much has unfolded since then and like yeah it's just so cool like just a continuous stream of of like receiving <laughs> yeah receptivity but um the art of peace yeah this is a really amazing beautiful book of wisdom and nuggets and gems and it's um, translated and edited by john stevens the author is moro uh, morahai um, ushiba that's japanese i think but, and yeah, sorry for butchering that but um yeah i had typed up a bunch of like some of my favorite things uh, i think one day and i just want to share a couple of those because it is like all about like the inner peace right now and that inner peace that we can radiate outward into the world that dynamic peace om shanti om om shanti om om shanti om and so yeah i thought this was perfect and i just kind of was led to open it and i was just like oh my god this is just so beautiful to me so i'm just going to share a couple of these things and and then i'm going to say bye for now and yeah bye for now and be well for now so um we are here together for for one another and all ourselves. Yes, we are, and that's the truth. Some of the process feels pretty frustrating, but it's all perfectly imperfect for our growth and learning. It still feels pretty wild and surreal at times and hard to believe that we're here for this ride, lol. It's a trip and a half, gotta laugh sometimes at all the silliness and forgive the blindness and ignorance. Awesome love, thank you. And so these are quotes from The Art of Peace. Eight forces sustain creation movement and stillness, solidification and fluidity, extension and contraction, unification and division. Life is growth. If we stop growing, technically, we are as good as dead. The art of peace is a celebration of the bonding of heaven and earth and humankind. It is all that is true, good, and beautiful. The art of peace functions everywhere on earth in realms ranging from the vastness of space down to the tiniest plants and animals. The life force is all pervasive and its strength boundless. The art of peace allows us to perceive and tap into that tremendous reserve of universal energy. If you have not linked yourself to true, empty, to true emptiness, you will never understand the art of peace. Use your body to create forms. Use your spirit to activate the art of peace. All the principles of heaven and earth are living inside you. Life itself is the truth and this will never change. Everything in heaven and earth breathes Breath is the thread that ties creation together. When the myriad variations in the universal breath can be sensed, the individual techniques of the art of peace are born. Your breath is the true link to the universe. Ascending breath spirals upward to the right. Descending breath spirals downward to the left. This interaction is the union of fire and water. It is the cosmic sound of A and um, Om, Alpha and Omega. Life is a divine gift. Life is a divine gift. The divine is not something outside of us. It is right in our very center. It is our freedom. In our training, we learn the real nature of life and death. When life is victorious, there is birth. When life is thwarted, there is death. A warrior is always engaged in a life and death struggle for peace. Contemplate the workings of this world. Listen to the words of the wise and take all that is good as your own. With this as your base, open your own door to the truth. Do not overlook the truth that is right before you. Do not forget to pay your respects to the four directions each day. This wonderful world of ours is a creation of the divine and for that gift we need to be ever grateful. That gratitude should be expressed through some kind of prayer. True prayer has no set form. Just offer your heartfelt gratitude in a way you feel is appropriate and you will be amply rewarded. Life is within death and death is within life. You must exist right here, right now. The art of peace. May you be at peace, may you be at one, may you be one at peace, and may peace be with you always. All right, I love you, and I thank you, and I bless you, and I celebrate you. I'm grateful for you, and I'm grateful for all of this, all of this love, yeah, that's right here. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being love for yourself and for one another for all others. Yeah, through being love for yourself. All right, take good care of yourself. Be love for yourself. Be true to yourself. Be well. All right, bye for now. See you next time. <laughs>